Tonight, opportunity is dead. No, I'm not talking about your hopes and plans for the future, though you are getting old. NASA's Opportunity rover has just died on the surface of Mars. So why does Mars keep killing everything we send up there? And now that Oppie is dead, what are our plans for the Red Planet as we continue our great galaxy quest across space? By Grabthar's Hammer, I'm Claire Riley. Welcome to Watch This Space. From the CNET studios in Sydney, this is your guide to everything on Earth you need to know about space. And tonight, life on Mars. It's cold, it's lonely, and it's particularly hard if you're a robotic rover that was flung onto the planet by a selfish and distant race of humans desperate for you to do their science homework. That's right, we keep shooting spacecraft to Mars and they keep on dying. Opportunity is just the latest. After spending almost 16 years fanging about the Red Planet, the Mars Opportunity rover, the adorable Wall-E of space probes, has finally stopped roving. Let's recap. Launched in 2003, Opportunity was part of the Mars Exploration rover mission alongside its twin rover, Spirit. Both rovers touched down in January 2004. Spirit, the pushy twin, came first, followed by Opportunity three weeks later. Yikes, that can't have been a good labour. Both rovers touched down in giant craters on opposite sides of the planet where liquid water could have once existed in the past. They set out to study rocks and soil and eventually found evidence of water showing the red planet could have once been a wet planet that supported microbial life. The rovers lived long and prospered, going full Vulcan and living well beyond their 90-day mission timelines. Earth lost contact with Spirit in 2010 and while Opportunity tried to cling on, Lasting more than 5,000 days longer than it was supposed to, its mission was eventually ended in February 2019. Opportunity eventually met its fate like all the others, dying cold and alone and far from home. Man, even Wally wasn't that sad. So why does everything we shoot at Mars have to die a horrible death? Well, turns out life on Mars is really hard. With more, here's CNET's favourite... CNET's only Mars correspondent, Claire Riley. Earth our human home. Over billions of years, conditions here have perfectly evolved to become the ideal support system for life. With plants and animals and beautifully maintained council fountains that make up our natural wilderness. But life on Mars sucks out loud and for a Martian rover that's flown 350 million miles to a strange planet, the odds of mission success are slim. The terrain is rough with deep craters and windswept dunes. The atmosphere is thin and massive dust storms can cloud the planet for weeks at a time. The first rover to survive on the surface of Mars was Sojourner, part of the Pathfinder mission. After sciencing the hell out of it for three months in 1997, its batteries eventually died and NASA lost contact. But not before it had managed to send through some super awesome 90s images of the surface of Mars. Radical. The rough terrain on Mars, that's what killed Spirit. In 2009, after travelling 7.7 .7 kilometres over five years, Spirit's wheels churned into a sand trap. While NASA attempted to reverse the rover out, it couldn't get Spirit to angle its solar arrays towards the sun to recharge its batteries. Eventually, in 2010, NASA had to watch on as its noble steed fell into hibernation. And finally, opportunity, death by dust storm. NASA lost contact with Oppie back in 2018 when a Mars-wide dust storm blocked out the sun and prevented the rover's solar arrays from storing solar energy. Despite trying to send more than 800 rescue commands to the rover, NASA couldn't make contact and eventually declared the mission ended in February 2019. Another rover, dead. A robotic corpse heaped upon the Martian funeral pyre. Its binary cries, falling silent on an alien planet far from home. Thanks, Claire. Opportunity isn't the only spacecraft that Mars has claimed. Ever since the US and the Soviet Union began attempting missions to Mars in the 1960s, we've crashed so much junk into the surface of the planet, it's starting to look kind of like a demolition derby after 10 cent beer night. Roll the tape. 1971, the Mars 2 Soviet space probe became the first human-made object to land on the surface of Mars by crash landing. Mars 3 failed after landing. Mars 6, contact lost. NASA's Mars Polar Lander and Deep Space 2 rover, lost. UK's Beagle rover, lost. And in 2016, the Schiaparelli lander, launched by the European Space Agency and Roscosmos as part of the ExoMars program, died in a fiery crash. 
First Mars giveth, then Mars taketh away. But not everything up there died on impact. NASA's Viking 1 and Viking 2 landers operated on Mars for years, while the Phoenix lander confirmed the presence of water ice back in 2008. And then there's the Curiosity rover, which is still traipsing around after landing in 2012, quietly analysing the surface and climate of Mars and trying to determine whether the planet ever supported life. And not far from there, Mars's latest resident, InSight, is quietly beavering away on its mission to drill further beneath the surface of Mars than we've ever been. So what's next? Well, after the failed Schiaparelli mission in 2016, ESA and Roscosmos are taking another crack with ExoMars 2020. The mission will launch a robotic rover complete with a built-in drill, hopefully becoming the first mission to move across the surface of Mars and study the planet at depth. And then there's NASA's Mars 2020 rover, which is set to launch to the Red Planet in mid-2020. Based on the Curiosity rover design, the rover will drill for soil and rock samples, test methods to turn the atmosphere into oxygen, and search for subsurface water, hopefully testing the waters, quite literally, for a future human expedition to the planet. If it doesn't die a fiery death first. All right, that's it for this week's episode of Watch This Space. If you enjoyed what you've seen, then make sure you hit the like button on your remote and subscribe to get more space news as it happens. I'm Claire Riley for CNET. Good night and Godspeed. The rovers lived long and prospered, going full Vulc full Vulcan. Okay, no. Full Vulcan, going full Vulcan and going full Vulcan and it's full Vulcan no. and it's I don't I don't watch Star Trek. It is the inferior of the Star franchises. There, I said it. I'm gonna get a lot of hate mail. For more, here's Martian correspondent and somehow the same gimmick we've been doing every single week, throwing to myself in another location, Claire Riley. Again. I didn't mean to get my head caught in it.